Hi, I'm Allie. I'm Nick. And this is But Have You Tried from the David A. Hubble Look Library. How are things going with you today? So good. So good. So How are good. you? How are you? Pretty yeah. good. I, pretty I good. feel pretty I feel pretty okay about uh, about my showing for this episode. I don't want right. to spoil anything, but I'm coming in with a lot of confidence, a lot okay. of swagger. Well, I'm glad to hear that. So, yeah. Uh, speaking of past episodes, though, I want to let everybody know that since our Jack Finney episode, I did add some more Jack Finney to the collection. So you can nice. read House of Numbers. You can read Good Neighbor Sam. We got Invasion of the Body Snatcher and Assault on the Queen, uh, the movies. So if that was not enough Jack Finney for you, this is the place to be There's so now. much more yeah, Jack yeah. Finney. I actually, inspired by our last episode, I did read... By which I mean, listen to Invasion of the Body Snatchers. Really? As I was like down in the stacks, moving books, just like listening to Invasion of Bo- the Body Snatchers okay. by myself, like no one come down here and creepy. interrupt me. Yeah, yeah. It was it was a little bit of a creepy setting for okay. it. Actually, okay. Now listen, I first is this is this the first time this has happened that we've done an episode and the other person has. Because I have not had miso soup since the miso soup that, episode. That makes sense. Not for lack of trying, I just haven't had it. Is this the first time the other person has purposely? Maybe. continued down the same road at least well i i'm still playing the ukulele that's true now is it that i'm knocking it out of the park with my suggestions or you're just more committed and you follow through i don't know hmm. i also like i'm very inclined to just like adapt things into my everyday life i'm like i already okay. have a five okay. zillion hobbies what's a couple more well, just add them on yeah exactly yeah. so it, it could have to do with that yeah, as well that makes sense because you I, you went from having no pets to like bottle feeding five crayfish <laughs> in 24 hours so it's true it was that makes very sense. fast it was turnaround. really quick really quick so what do you think of invasion of the body snatchers i thought it was really good i yeah. enjoyed it a lot as we've discussed before i'm not real big on scary things yeah i just not because i don't want to or mm-hmm. but just because i can't yeah but i felt like invasion of the body snatchers wasn't too scary which i was kind of expecting that yeah. it wouldn't be too scary yeah. but it had that like essence the like vibe of scariness yeah. that it you has, can like enjoy it has a creeping dread yes you know but like not so much that you're like well th- i'm just having a bad time i don't enjoy this it was yeah. like enough that i was like nice i'm i'm a little scared yeah it's not going to like keep you up at night exactly right exactly yeah. okay well, and i thought the audiobook narration was really good okay. so the first time I read Time and Again, it was on a giant chunky cassette, as we discussed. Yeah. I've never listened to any of the other ones, like audiobook style, though. So that would be interesting. I thought that the narrator, it felt like the right kind of voice for that, like Jack Finney okay. Okay. narration vibe. Yeah. It gelled. Okay. And I did very much like that the woman character was like, there's that whole line where she, that you mentioned where she's oh, basically yeah. like, what do you think I'm going to do? Yeah. Just nothing? <laughs> yeah, I'm just going to hide in the corner. <laughs> You've been watching yeah. too many movies. Yeah. Like, what the heck? Yeah. I was moment. like, that's that's pretty great. Yeah, I agree. Are you still feeling like you're going to read the sequel of To Time and Again? I will. I may wait a while first, though, because yeah. my, my to-be-read list is like, it's oh, I, yeah. it's getting, there's a lot. Mine is, there's mine a is lot that I need to get to. Yeah. I was thinking right now, like, I want to read God Emperor of Dune before the new Dune movie comes out. I'm reading a book club book with my friends, and my sister's coming to visit, and we were going to read a book together. Malik and I are doing this Bob Marley podcast together, oh, so I'm like, I have to read a Bob Marley book. So I'm like, oh, geez. Your plate is full. I know. I have to just like call into everything and just sit home flipping pages, flipping pages. So I, That sounds like a little fun and a little stressful at the same yeah. time. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's exciting times. Yeah. Yeah, I do this thing with my brother sometimes where we'll like trade a book. Like if there's a book I really want them to mm. read, they'll read it and I'll read a book that they read. Yeah. And like whoever really wants the other one to read the other book is who initiates it basically. So that's why I read the Amulet books is I was trying to get my brother Bren to read something and he was like, well, if you read the Amulet books. Right. I'll, what did you want him to read? I wanted him to read the later Penderix books. He's read the okay. earlier ones. Okay. Yeah. And he just reread all of them because it had been a while. Okay. And then my brother Wes really wanted me to read this book called A Face Like Glass by Francis Hardinge okay. that he's obsessed with, mm. like obsessed. And so he agreed to read a book that I had recommended to him yeah. before. And I'm working on A Face Like Glass, but I'm like moving through it really slowly. So okay. I need to I need to pick up the pick pace. Up the pace. I gotta, he's finished yeah. the book I told him to read Uh-oh. already. So I, I know I'm falling You're behind on my end of the behind. bargain. Yeah. Well, that's the great thing about But Have You Tried. Now we just have a built-in. We can make somebody that's do true. the thing. So. Yeah. yeah, it's a lot of power. It is a, it's a lot it of power a lot to wield. Power. So, yeah, with great power. Uh huh. Yeah. Uh-huh. Well, anyway, do we want to talk about this episode's yes, topic? Yes, we do. In our last episode, I assigned Nick to try knitting. Yes. Which is something that I have done for most of my life, and something that obviously your wife Hillary does quite a bit. Yeah. 
um, well, but not something recent. that you'd ever that's tried. Somewhat recent for her. Oh, really? As well. I didn't yeah. know that. In the last, you know, couple years, but it's not like you know forever. I think she did a long time ago, and then stopped for a long time, and kind of picked it back up. And I understand is now, that. Like in earnest knitting. In so, earnest knitting. Yeah. So how did? I mean, I guess you're supposed to give me facts. Yeah, first. I can give, you some facts. give me facts, and then and then you can tell me how I it went. Give you a few facts. Okay. Well, I was looking up the history of knitting, and I found this lovely little blurb from MotherKnitter.com, and I. I just trust that website. Uh, how can you not? With a name like that, I trust it. So this is what it says. Knitting has a long and fascinating history that originated in the Middle East and Eastern Mediterranean around the 11th or 12th century. The earliest knitted artifacts are Egyptian socks from that era. Knitting then spread to Europe where male guilds used it to make religious garments. Hmm. And then from there, just boom, boom, boom. Now everybody's knitting, knitting up a storm. Yeah. My wife has knitted socks. That she wears regularly, which That's is very impressive hardcore. to me because it's like so thin. It's yeah. like the thinnest knitting. I don't understand how you do it. I haven't I haven't tried to do socks yet. I feel like that's that's a pretty that's a pretty high high skill. Yeah. High yeah. commitment level yeah. of knitting. Well, she's made me a couple of slippers, as you'll recall. The ravioli slippers, which I, I still do remember. wear. <laughs> ravioli slippers. <laughs> okay. So you gave uh, the only thing I changed from what you gave me was I switched to shorter needles than the okay. ones you because you gave me very long needles and I started that way, but I just felt a little clunky. I can and respect so that. I use size eight needles. I use the blue yarn that you gave me. And I I looked at some online stuff. I flipped through the books you got me. And then I had my wife sort of like standing over me as I started uh, because I don't like casting on. I don't like that casting at all. Casting on is a little scary. And I don't like binding off. I don't like mm. the whole, both of those two processes. I was like, nah. Well, and it's like you I only do them so. once per project. So right. you don't get as much practice yeah. as with the rest like of when the project. I, when I got to a stopping point, I was like, well, I have no idea how to cast something on now. I don't remember. I don't remember at all. So I'd have to go back and do it again. Do you want to see it? Sure. Do you want to yeah. see the finished I'm product? I'm excited. Nice. Here. There you go. Very good. Okay. So you have to examine what stitch you use. Yeah. So I did. It's just a scarf. It's just a simple straight scarf. I made it really wide because I like wide scarfs, um, and I alternated knitting and purling. Nice. It looks so, really good. Yeah, you can kind of see, like, when you look, you can see, like, as I get better or worse, like, the early on, it's a little chaotic, and then it's a little bit more uniform later on, and then some things I'm like, well, I don't know what happened there. That's um, definitely a. Uh, a trademark of a first knitting project, yeah. I feel like, is the uh, the variation in, yeah. in what's going on in, in the scarf. So I wanted it to be like long enough so that, that I would actually like wear it. And I'm, I could maybe have gone a little bit longer, but I was pretty satisfied with this length because it's enough to uh, be able to flip back, you know? That's, and I actually, that's all that's required. I wore it. Like when I walked in today, I was wearing it. And I was oh. like... I've done it. That's incredible. It's it. too bad that I didn't see you. Although I guess it would have kind of spoiled I know. the episode I know. Well, a little I was bit. on the lookout for you when I came in. I was like, where is she? <laughs> like a and little then spy I came mission? Right back up and got rid of it. Nice. So, yeah. I would say that the process, like once I got started, I would find that sometimes I was like, oh, fine, totally. I got mm -hmm. this. And then other times I'd be like, I've never even used hands before. I don't <laughs> know how to do this at all. And it was like, I don't know. That happened to me a lot, especially early on. But even right up towards the end, I would just kind of get to a point where I'd be like, wait, what have I done? Like, what? where is this? Like, is this one supposed to go here? You know? Mm -hmm. So, like, I did have that situation where I kept, like, confusing myself. But my wife didn't do any of it. She was on call whenever something would go wrong. And I would holler and she would come. Having an on-call like, is okay, very, just very helpful. But there were some times where I was knitting where she wasn't there and I had dropped a stitch or... I didn't do the full, like, I didn't fully transition it right. And mm -hmm. so there was like a loop, but it wasn't like woven through mm -hmm. that I got back on track myself a couple nice. of times. So I felt pretty okay about that. Uh, let's see. It did make my hands very dry. I don't know if you've experienced this, but like something about like the, I don't the know. The texture yarn, of like the, the yarn. The texture, like it would snag on and just by my end, my hands were just like very dry. Is that a thing? I don't know. My okay. hands are like. In the summer, it's fine. But in the winter, it's like my hands are like little crocodiles one way sure. or the other. So I, <laughs> I don't know if the knitting would really make a, an okay. obvious difference in my experience. Okay. It's just a little more crocodile -y. Yeah. Yeah. So I did this most of the time. Either I was listening to an audiobook or I was watching TV. A couple of times I would like set it down and the needle head like would slip out of four oh, or five. And I'd happens. be like, ah! Yep. Mm -hmm. You know, so there's a lot of panic that happened uh, when I wasn't sure exactly what was going on or how to get it back in and... 
I, I will say I don't, so I didn't weave in like the ends, you mm-hmm. know, like I've got these like hangers on and I wasn't sure exactly what to do about that. I also would like it if they had like tassels or some oh, sort yeah. of like fringe on the end, but I don't know how to do that. Do I can how, show you how to make you know tassels. How to do that? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right. And the thing that drives me crazy too is that it rolls. I don't want it to roll. Oh, that's fair. I want it to be flat. Do you know how to make it flat? Um, so one of the ways that you can make something flat is you can like do a little border of a different stitch around the edge. Okay. Like if you, if you're doing like a knitting and purling combination, yeah. you could like do a little, a little section that's just knit around the edge or a little section of like rib around the edge. Okay. Sometimes that works. The other thing you can do is just like commit to like every time it rolls, unroll, like unrolling it and trying to get it to lay fat. And okay. that, that helps a little bit. I had been like, here I had it in between two books, the knitting books that you gave me. Nice. And I kept like flattening it and folding it so that it couldn't roll in. But then it does. As soon as I put it on or take it off, it just rolls. So I didn't know if like if I got it wet and then like, you know. Sometimes doing that firm helps. to dry it or something. Like, I cannot I, I guarantee know. how well that would work. No guarantees. Hillary probably would, okay. would be a better All resource right. on that. All right. Well, because a lot of a lot of knitting patterns will be like, oh, when you get done, you know, like you should get it wet and shape it like this. And often by the time I get done, unless it like really obviously needs that to happen, I'm like, yeah, good enough. We're done. (laughs) Okay. What are some of your favorite things to knit? I enjoy doing hats and scarves. Scarves are fun because it's like once you've got the pattern, you just kind of go. The issue though is like scarves, there's only so many of them that you need. Right. True. And so I've gone to the point where I've gifted scarves to a number of people because I'm like, well, I want to do another scarf, but I really don't need another scarf. And they tend to be, yeah, just like pretty straightforward and you can go. I've knitted a pumpkin once, which was pretty fun. Ooh, that is fun. I kind of had to make up the pattern a little bit because I looked at some ideas for patterns, but I wasn't like totally satisfied with any of them. So I was like, well, I've got the general idea. I'll just kind of figure it out, which worked okay. That makes sense. I don't understand how you do like patterns or how how I would have like woven in another color. Like I just, that is blows my mind i can't believe i did this honestly i you did good pretty impressed with myself just for having gotten as far as i did because like i said i made it wide and my wife was like oh you're gonna regret that i was like no 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 i want it to be good but then i was like oh geez i could have shaved a couple inches off this width and have been a lot farther but yeah that's fair i don't like a thin scarf you know it's like it needs to cover your neck or else it's kind of like what am i doing I wanted it to be that way, but I do want to, I don't feel like I'm fully done. I don't think I'm going to add length because I, mm-hmm. I did bind, bind it off at the end and everything. I just got to tuck these little flyaways in, but I would like to add some kind of fringe, like I said, to the end and get away to flatten it. Well, well done. Thank you. <laughs> so you were pretty successful in your knitting attempt. I feel like, yes, I'm, I was satisfied. Do you think it's something that you'll want to keep doing or maybe not do it right away? Give yeah. your hands some time to recover, that but do it again a, eventually? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, that is, like I mentioned in our bookshelf episode, my, my left hand in particular was like uh, straighten out, straighten out fingers just sort of from like holding it. Because I think I'm still a little clumsy with it too, obviously. So And if not, you're like feeling at all stressed, I feel like it's easy to just like just really like tighten continue up. continue to tighten my yeah. grip. Yeah. Um, one thing I noticed was that like it, I, I do get antsy... You know, like if we're going to like watch a movie or we're going to like marathon a show or something like that, I do get a little, I don't know, like I need something else going on, Mm -hmm. you know? And so I will fall back on habits of like, oh, let me just like check the news on my phone or do that kind of thing. And then you're like, whoops, I missed the most important part of the show. Like I don't like to do that. And I said, I'm like, I'm not going to do that. And then sometimes I forget and Mm -hmm. I do it anyway. Or I just throw caution to the wind and do it anyway. So while I was doing this, I was like, oh, look at this. Like I'm occupied, but it's not, you know, I'm not having to like laser focus on it. Right. So it was kind of a nice thing to do to kind of keep me going. And then it's, you know, at the end I have a scarf. I know. Rather than, you know, having read articles about the best episode of the Brady Bunch or whatever that I'm (laughs) doing. Uh, So I will say once I finished, I was kind of like, oh. So I just sit here now, you know Mm -hmm. what I mean? Like, I'm just going to, so yeah, I think that I would again, like, I don't think I'm going to be like, woo, I'm a knitter for life now. But, um, yeah, I, I definitely could see like going back in and doing a little more just, just for the sake of like having something to keep me occupied, you know? And when I started, cause I think I, I want to say it was like the day after, like maybe the day of, like I went home with that stuff you got me 
And I was like, I just want to like see if I can like get it started. And I wasn't intending to just like dive right into it. Mm -hmm. But once I got it all cast on and I was like, well, I should do a few rows to see how I feel. I was like, well, I guess I'm in it now. So this probably took me the full month, which, you know, like my wife could have done in an afternoon probably, but like it took me (laughs) a long time. And when I, when it started, I really did have to look at it the whole time. I had to be like, all right, in this loop. Because like when you did it, when you showed me in the last episode, or mm-hmm. the, you know, and you were just like, oh, you just do this. And you just like, <laughs> just like made origami out of your little fingers. I was like, impossible. It can't be done. It's like, well, that's that. So <laughs> by the end, I still was having to look, but I felt a lot more confident to just kind of like have it in the background of my mind rather right. than having it be the primary focus. So yes, all that to say, I could see picking it up again. Uh, I might try crochet. What do you feel about crochet? I like crochet. Yeah. I like both knit and crochet. I feel like some people are like, I'm a knit person or I'm a crochet yeah. person and never the twain shall meet. But yeah. I like them both. They do kind of different things. Yeah. Like I like to crochet little animals. Right. Like I, we talked about the hippo that I we made, right? We did talk I about think. that, yes. But, and I know you can knit stuff like that too, but for some reason I'm like, that just feels a little weird yeah. to me. Yeah. And like, I also, the idea of like crocheting like a sweater also feels weird to me. So okay. it's like I do them... For so if you're going to crochet, you're going to make a hippo or Probably. Some, something in the something animal like kingdom. That. Or maybe something with granny squares. That would be okay. Okay. All right. But if it's just like, I'm going to do a blanket, I would never be like, I'm going to crochet this crochet. entire blanket. Yeah. Because I could see sticking with something like this, but it would also, like if my wife's knitting, it would be kind of, you know, if I was crocheting and she was knitting, man, we sound boring. We're not <laughs> though. We're we're youthful, dynamic people <laughs> with a lot of interests, uh, but we could, we could knit and crochet while watching TV. Oh, uh, it'd be fun. TV. Yeah. What what have you worked on? Like, what is your proudest, biggest knitting accomplishment where you finished it and you were like, this is it. This is it. This belongs in a museum, as Indiana Jones would say. Probably my biggest knitting accomplishment is the sweater that I made okay. last year. Okay. That I just kind of like, I'd wanted to make one for a really long time. Yeah. But I'm very bad at planning ahead. Yeah. And so... The thing where you're like, I want to make a sweater, so I will buy yarn for the sweater, and then I will design right. the sweater, and then right. I will make the sweater. I like want to get to the make the sweater. Like as soon as I it occurs to me that I want to make a sweater, I'm like, well, I want to start working on it yeah. today. You know, like there's going to be no delay. Right. Right. So I had like just like some scrap yarn left over from other things, but like a decent amount, and I was like, well, I could just make like a stripey kind of like crazy whatever color sweater yeah, yeah and then i ended up having enough of the colors that i was like all right it's just gonna be only these three colors mm-hmm. and i did have to buy a little more but like it was fine because yeah. i was already in the midst of the project instantly, exactly right? you could dive right in and so i think basically that reason of like having to plan ahead is why i'd never done one before but so okay. it was the first sweater that i ever did okay and i did it like pretty fast because i was like well now mm-hmm. that i've started this i'm obsessed and i can't i can't yeah. stop so okay I, you wear this sweater, right? I feel I like do. I've seen the sweater that you're talking about. I have about. worn it a few times. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. That's a cool sweater. And yeah. And you just I created like it. it from and it's, nothing. And it's very warm because I tend to knit pretty tight okay. for whatever reason. Yeah. Um, and so it's like very dense and like keeps in the warmth, which is something okay. that I need. So do you mess with like different, cause I know there's like super thick bulky yarn and then mm-hmm. there's like the teeny tiny, like what is your, what is your go-to? Does it depend on the project or you just, it depends a little bit on the project Okay. and and what yarn I have. And if I'm like, well, someone gave me this random yarn, I guess I'll find a way to use it. Okay. Which happens decently often. Um, I've used some bulky yarn, which I find fun. I try not to go as much for the like really thin yarn because I, I have limited patience and it just like can take so long yeah. with the thin yarn, depending yeah. on what you're making. I feel like usually I tend to go for just like the worsted weight. If it's like a regular thing, I'll okay. just be like, all right. And I have so much of that left over that it's like really easy to mix different colors and yeah. stuff. And so I tend to keep kind of going with that so that it's easy for me to spontaneously yeah. decide to make something right. because I don't have to like be like, well, these are different that sizes. What am I going to do? Mm-hmm. My sister-in-law, Allison, is a, she's a crocheter and she actually, she taught a crochet class here. This yarn that you found was from a stocking nice. uh, class that she taught years ago. But um, she would go to like thrift stores and get like old blankets or old sweaters um, and like get yarn from that. And I remember one time she brought just a bunch of stuff, like a big thrift store haul. And she and my sister Pigeon and I just sat around our living room like talking and like unraveling sweaters <laughs> and nice. rolling them into little balls and stuff. Do you ever do that? Do you ever? Reclaim? I haven't. I okay. really want to, but I think every time I go to a thrift store, I kind of forget about it. Okay. Or like I look, but the only things I can find are ones that I don't think will unravel very yeah, well. Yeah. So that's on my like 
my future plans is okay. to try and do that. My more. wife doesn't like to do it because she feels bad unraveling other people's <laughs> work. I can understand that. <laughs> but I mean, if it's languishing in a thrift store, why not? Yeah, Let's exactly. give it a new purpose. Well, and sometimes you know? there's ones that'll be like damaged. And so yeah. it's like you couldn't necessarily right. wear it or use it the way that it is. But if you unravel the yarn or it, it's just like a really weird style yeah. that probably not anyone is going to go for anymore. But I, I do understand yeah. the, the sensation. It of was guilt. a fun little just like round robin us like destroying sweaters, though. And <laughs> having that like turn into a blanket was a good time. I think the coolest thing that my wife made outside of the slippers, which I truly do love. And she's I mean, it's it's next level. Her her sweaters and things are they blow my mind. But I watched the Lego Star Wars holiday special. And in it, Poe Dameron is wearing a BB-8 ugly Christmas sweater. It's just green and it has BB-8 on it and it has like snowflakes and like a little pattern. And he's just a Lego. You know what I mean? He's mm-hmm. just like a little Lego guy. Like this sweater does not exist, right? It doesn't exist in the world. There's no patterns for it. So I kept saying like, oh, I really want that sweater. And so she just looked at pictures from that special, made a pattern, and then made this Lego Poe Dameron sweatshirt for, That's incredible. Sweater for me that I wear every Christmas. So, that is truly, truly yeah. impressive and delightful. Yeah. Yeah, I know. I was <laughs> telling my friends about it. Uh, we were we were doing a Christmas episode of The Sindorian Life, and I was showing them, like, look, I'm wearing the sweater. And it blew their mind. They were like, she could be a millionaire. Just, like, mass produce the Poe Dameron sweater. Just crank out a couple of those. Yeah, and just uh, retire on it. I so. could see that. I could see that working. I'm not going to lie. Do you have knitting ambitions? Like, is there a thing one of these days, one of these days, I'm going to make... I would like to try socks eventually. Socks. I am intimidated by them, as previously mentioned, but I would like to try them eventually. I don't understand like knitting in a circle. Like I don't get any of that. Oh, well, there's two ways you can do it. One is you have needles that are like connected at the end by a cord. (laughs) Yes, exactly. Like Like the Ninja Turtles. Yes. (laughs) Okay. And you you cast on and then you just kind of join. So it's a big circle of loops and then you just knit around and around and around. Mm -hmm. And the other way, which works better if you have like a really small project and so like you don't have enough room for a lot of cord yeah is if you have like four needles and you have like three that make a circle and the one that you're oh, using to go around okay. i have seen my wife do that yes yeah, okay all right again witchcraft alchemy i don't understand yeah. like how it happens <laughs> you know that is definitely like a more on the advanced yeah scale of knitting yeah. knitting techniques it's but. like in the sword and the stone when merlin just like makes all the stuff clean and everything that's what it <laughs> looks like to me you know that somebody's just sitting back making it happen i'm always so scared by the concept of stitches just like falling off one of the one of the side needles right. while i'm working on yeah. it yeah i think that's that's what what yeah. freaks me out about that is just the the stitch lossage yeah potential yeah I get it. Well, it is so scary too. Like when things would drop or when it would start to look like it was pulling through and I was like, Oh no, I got to get this piece out so Mm -hmm. I can put it back. It was, that was some scary. There was some panic. You brought some panic into my life. I'm sorry. So yeah, I remember when I got to the point like in my life that I could like solve most of those things on my own. And I was like, wow, I feel so much calmer. I'm more relaxed. I feel so grown up and like responsible. It's, I actually have a couple sweaters that aren't like home yeah. knit they're like machine knit that yeah. have started that like have had a hole or something and started unraveling yeah. and i fixed them using my knitting technique and then like sewed it closed yeah and i feel just like amazing uh-huh. when i do that i'm <laughs> like this is the best day yeah. ever i You've can't believe that i've done this yeah hillary sometimes will go into like a knitting fugue state where i'm like hello hello and she's just like in the zone with 50 needles going at once and <laughs> you know so it's a, there is a there's a level of concentration i feel like there's requires, a certain certainly. kind of like zen yeah almost trance they can yeah they can it is it is kind of relaxing i mean it made my hands hurt because i'm very old but uh, <laughs> it, it was kind of relaxing overall so i think this was a successful pick and uh, i i could see sticking with it now i know that you are a big knitter but have you tried the odd couple which ran on cbs from 2015 to 2017 starring matthew perry and thomas lennon i haven't never is this based on the show the odd couple or related well, to it they're all based on the original play by neil simon which i did, did yes you, did you i see did it? see that you saw it that's fun i did it here did you see it here i think i saw it at angelica okay yeah we did it in houghton and angelica and then we did here in the nancy howe auditorium so i love neil simon i love the odd couple movies i love the old show but the 2015 show again it's three seasons uh matthew perry plays uh oscar and thomas lennon plays felix i am not a big rewatcher of anything like i just i just don't do that very much like it's a rare kind of thing and there's something about this version of The Odd Couple that I feel like I could just 
over and over and over and over again. And it's, I'm interested to see what you think, because I feel like this is maybe the most niche thing that I've had you try because it's not a particularly popular show. And it's almost just like in the performances and in the camaraderie that, that I like it as much as I do, because it, I don't know, something about it just really works for me. So it's on DVD, it's streaming on Paramount plus. So I have my DVD here that you can try. And I would say just, you know, they're, they're quick 20 minute episodes. If you want to watch the whole first season in a month, I think that would be nice. Cause there's some good payoff. It's like 10 episodes. Okay. Um, but I think if you just get in it, no, that's, I think you have to watch the first okay, season okay. because that works out to be about uh, how much Joan of Arcadia I watched. Okay. You know, it seems reasonable. And I knit a sweater for a whole month. So a scarf, a whole month. It's true. I All have right. some, some penance to do. And if you feel like it, you don't have to, cause you already saw the play starring me, but if you wanted to read the original <laughs> script, it is, it is very good. And we have it here in the collection. So uh, but The Odd Couple has been remade many a times. And something about this one is just like a sentimental favorite of mine. Nice. Well, okay. I'm excited. And I feel like, honestly, like niche niche shows yeah. that aren't popular and that depend a lot on the yeah. performance tends to be stuff that I really like. Yeah. So I'm optimistic about this. I think it'll probably go well. Yeah. It's quick. It is uh, it is three seasons, but it's like 10 or so episodes per season. So it's like 35 episodes or something like that. Okay. So, and you know, just... It's a it's a classic odd couple like the the title like the, their friendship is just like very fun to me. Supporting cast is really cool. It's got Yvette Nicole Brown from like Community and other things like that. So anyway, we'll see. We'll see if you like it or not. So in the meantime, before we're back to talk about the odd couple, mm-hmm. um, we have our winter reading program going on here at yes. the library. This is new. This is new. A new thing. We always have our summer reading program, which is a big deal. Yes. But this year we said, why not, why not winter, winter? too? <laughs> Why not? Well, let's brighten up the let's cold. Honestly, heart of winter, winter, I feel like you know? is when we really need it yeah, too. I agree. I agree. So our winter reading program is very simple. Basically, you check out this fun little tracker. Yep. Uh, for the adults, it looks like a date do slip, and for the kids, it's like paw prints. Yep. And you keep track of how much time you spend reading, and you turn it in and get, depending on your age group, yeah. some amount of small prizes. That's right. It's nice and simple. You mm-hmm. can mostly do it at home. Mm-hmm. I'm tracking my time. Are you tracking your As time? As am I, yes. Because the adults and teens get a cool winter reading program, beat the chill coffee mug. And how can you not want that? I know. You can use it at home. You can use it here in our coffee cart. It's great. And then for kids, yeah, they're, they're entered to win some prizes at the end. Plus there's stickers and there's candy and Absolutely. it's just a good chill. People are always, when I remember are always like, Hey, do you want to do the summer reading program? They're like, Oh no, I can't commit to that. You don't have to commit to anything. And it's even more true for the winter reading program because mm-hmm. you just have to track what you're already reading. Like yes. you don't have to read anything specific. It's just whatever you're reading, just tell us because we're trying to hit 500 hours read yes. in the month of uh, February. So I think we and audiobooks count too. Audiobooks count. Which Graphic I need to novels count. Tally up my audiobook time. You know, time the back from of yesterday. a cereal box, you know. That's if you, true. If you really stick I'm not going to stop you. No. Yeah. Reading is reading, and that's great. Yes. <laughs> um, but tying back to our original thing here, what else can you check out during this time, Allie? Uh, also during this time, I mean, uh, all kinds forever, of things. Forever. <laughs> forever. Yeah. Um, one of the things we're working on getting out to check out, though, is knitting kits. <gasps> So if you want to also have your hands become dry, yeah. <laughs> crumpled, sad little hands. If you want your left hand to be a little claw, you can come <laughs> check it out. You can come check it out. We're going to have like a starter kit um, that'll have like a, a size seven needle, which is a pretty basic, easy one, mm-hmm. and a little chart with some basic stitches and some yarn. And we're going to have a more like uh, a little more advanced kind of intermediate set that's going to have like a, a full set of all the sizes. So if you want to try some different projects and you need different size needles and all that kind of thing, you can check that one out as well. Okay. Which I'm excited about this. I think I it's going to be great. That's fun. Yeah, that's fun. So we've got that. We've got the ukuleles. Yes. we got the fishing poles. We just keep adding weird stuff. I know. I think What's going to be next? I know. Just like take home a plant for the day. I know. And that if you're local, cool. yeah, take home a plant. Babysit this plant. <laughs> Honestly. Uh, you can come in and see all the, we keep moving things around. We're I on know. a tear. We got new rugs. We got it's new just seating like interior areas. design season. We can't stop. Can't stop, won't stop. Absolutely. That's our thing. Uh, all right. Well, then two weeks, we're going to just be talking about what we're doing, what we're watching, what we're reading, all that. And then a month, Allie will have watched The Odd Couple, and we can talk about it. And you can watch The Odd Couple, too, everybody, because it's a fun show, and you can tell us what you think. You can Absolutely. find us on Facebook at David A. Howe Public Library. Uh, we also have a Tumblr. But have you tried? And there's also Instagram. So, you know, come find us. Let us and know TikTok. what you think. What? TikTok. 
Oh, and TikTok. Man, we're on a roll. TikTok, threads, we're everywhere. We've so got you have, so, so you have many no places. No excuse. No to excuse to not us. tell us what you think about the odd couple starring That's Matthew true. Perry from 2015. <laughs> well, on that note, I have some watching to do. The listeners have some yes. watching to do. So yeah. thanks, everybody. We'll see you next time. All right. Now you got to tell me how to tie up the end to this. Okay. Okay. <laughs>